What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nation's blog and theboys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and that um, that you had something delicious to eat. Whether it was for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, I don't know exactly when you're watching this. That's the magic of the internet. But I hope that the last thing you had to eat was, in fact, delicious i mentioned the power of the internet the magic of the internet you can watch this video obviously on the blog of the boys youtube channel please make sure to subscribe like the videos those things help us out more than we can possibly tell you we are chasing down arrowhead pride sb nation's home for kansas city chiefs content once we pass them we are uh, the SB Nation YouTube channel with the most subscribers. So that is something cool for all of us to be a part of here, obviously, at Blog and the Boys. Uh, we, you know, we talk about the Dallas Cowboys, so you know we're obviously the best. You know Who cares about Super Bowls? We're here to talk about controversy and drama and really just interesting things. Um, that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, I'm using some heavier words than I think are necessary, but we're about to talk about it, so... I think that the context is going to be said out loud. Again, the magic of um, voice in this particular case. Um, as you can see on your screen right here, there seems to be some vague idea slash assumption that the Cowboys could have a need slash competition at right tackle. That's a lot of words because I don't know exactly how to word this. This is a really weird sort of thing. What are you talking about, RJ? Well, in case you didn't see, on Wednesday, ESPN's Mel Kuyper released his latest mock draft. All right. Totally normal sort of thing. This happens all the time. Nobody is surprised by this. Nobody is shocked by this. So what the heck is going on? Well, let's kind of scroll down and, and check things out. Let's move through the mock, move through the mock, move through the mock, because the Dallas Cowboys weren't this bad. They were about uh, this bad here. All right, Amarius Mims, not a shock, right? This pick would make a lot of sense for the Dallas Cowboys at 24 overall. Nobody is weirded out by the pick why are we here rj why are we having this discussion well i tell you why because let's read the words my friend let me zoom in just a bit for you right there make it nice and easy for you all right let me make sure you're good to go here we go mims has even fewer college starts than guyton talking about uh you know other prospects as he was limited to just eight over the past three seasons because of injuries and draft picks in front of him on the bulldogs depth chart Okay, just tell us what we need to know. But when he did play, he made defenders look silly. Mim, 6'7", and 340, allowed zero sacks, and just five total pressures across 372 career pass blocks. Sounds like an awesome pick. Will NFL teams be scared off of his limited experience, or will they draft him high based on his size and potential? I lean with the latter. Personally, this is a very tackle-rich draft. I lean toward the latter is exactly what he said as well, right? You know, it's kind of the way I'm doing this here. Uh, because he was that good when he got on the field. All this is very normal, RJ. What are we doing here? Read the next thing. To make room for Mims, the Cowboys could part ways with longtime left tackle Tyron Smith. That isn't shocking. I don't think we think that's going to happen, but would not be shocking nonetheless. Who's a free agent? All right. And it, so it wouldn't be parting with. It would just be not bringing him back or him wanting to go somewhere else. But keep on reading or have him compete with Terrence Steele on the right side. He played right tackle in college, but has the talent to play both sides. Now, we read through all this and, and had the fun that we did because this is strange right? Is this not kind of strange? I find this to be strange. Once again, or have him compete with Terrence Steele on the right side. We're going to stop right there. Why is there a potential competition with Terrence Steele on the right side? And why does anybody think this? Now, Mel Kuyper, whether you agree with him or not, who the hell is Mel Kuyper? We've all heard this soundbite before. Um, I'm a fan of Mel Kuyper, certainly one of the foremost NFL draft experts and insiders in the business so what he says is significant all right what he says has value what he says has merit and so if he is saying based on the people he's talking to you know something along the lines of could the cowboys have him compete at right tackle with terrence Steele?" our ears perk up now i think we all think terrence Steele was fine in 2023 for the dallas cowboys but i think beyond that we think we know that Terrence Steele was given a brand new contract extension by the Dallas Cowboys last offseason. Why then would they immediately draft somebody else to compete with him at right tackle after having just paid him? He certainly wasn't bad enough to the point that you're considering moving on from him. This is strange. And maybe you're thinking, RJ, you're making way too much of a mountain out of this tiny little molehill. This is one throwaway comment this is just one analyst this is one person's opinion there's no need to kind of make a big old you know huss and fuss about this well i present to you a mock draft from last week from nfl media's daniel jeremiah one of you know the nfl's 
foremost experts when it comes to NFL draft coverage, just like Mel Kuyper. These are two of the very best draft analysts in the biz. All right. You can read the article there from my or read the title, excuse me, uh, from my article. I wrote about both um, this mock that we're about to discuss and the Mel Kuyper one. You can check those out at blogontheboys.com. But anyway, Daniel Jeremiah's latest mock draft suggests the Cowboys have need at both tackle positions. This was last week. All right. It was less than a week ago, but it wasn't today. Mel Kuyper's mock uh, dropped on Wednesday. That's the day I'm putting this together for you. So, all right. What did he say? Let's scroll down here. These are Daniel Jeremiah's words. Whoops, I went too far for you here. Here we go. This was Tyler Guyton, not Jalen Guyton. Um, you know, slip of the tongue a little moment ago. Dallas Cowboys, Tyler Guyton, Oklahoma. This is the Guyton that Mel Kuyper was referencing here. With Tyron Smith headed for free agency, these are Daniel Jeremiah's words that we quoted here. The Cowboys can have 2022 first rounder Tyler Smith man one tackle spot. Okay, right. He played left tackle in his first year in the NFL in 2022. That wouldn't be weird. While Guyton takes the other. What? What are we doing here? Why is this a conversation? What is happening here to where last week Daniel Jeremiah intimated that, <laughs> that Tyler Guyton could take a tackle spot with Tyler Smith taking the other tackle spot, and then that Mel Kuyper would intimate that there could be a competition at the right tackle position. Again, I don't want to sit here and play conspiracy theorist or act silly or act ridiculous or anything like that, but there seems to be some vague idea or assumption that the Cowboys could have a need or competition at right tackle, right? We're not talking about two yahoos or two randoms off the street. We're talking about Mel Kuyper and Daniel Jeremiah. They are two of the most plugged in people when it comes to the NFL draft. This, uh, this is a line that relates to Jeremiah specifically, and I mentioned this in the article that I talked about. He loves to say all the time, that he builds his board, his, his overall board, obviously, ahead of every draft every year with his eyes in terms of how he grades players, et cetera, et cetera. But he builds his mocks with his ears, meaning that he bases them off of things he's hearing around the NFL, obviously, as we get closer and closer to the NFL draft because – you know, teams have positional needs, and so you don't necessarily just see the top, you know, 32 picks go one through 32 in the first round of the NFL draft. So if both of these experts are hearing some sort of teeny tiny breadcrumbs, isn't that worth talking about? Because it's not just that they're saying Tyron Smith could be gone in free agency. That logic is fair. That assumption is completely and totally justified. It is very possible that Tyron Smith leaves in free agency or retires or just doesn't come back to the Dallas Cowboys for whatever reason. Again, I think that we all think he probably will return to the Cowboys, but we could live with that assumption. We can understand that assumption. Where does this other one come from? Where does this idea that right tackle is a question mark for the Dallas Cowboys, especially considering that Terrence Steele got a brand new contract from the Dallas Cowboys, a contract extension that is, just last year. In fact, let's get his contract up on the screen for you just a second here. This is how we uh, you know, how we make things happen here around Block on the Voice. That's why you should be subscribing. Terrence Steele's contract per over the cap is now, uh, there's an ad on my screen, goodness gracious, now officially on your screen i'll zoom in for you just a little bit here all right this is what we're looking at 2024 now there's no guaranteed salary on Terrence Steele's deal after this year that is very much worth mentioning here no guaranteed salary after the 2024 season but there is guaranteed money there's no way that they're cutting Terrence Steele this year this is a weird thing look at this extension signed 2023 again we're just talking we're just you know, kicking the can around you and me. Why is there any kind of conversation about Terrence Steele having a competition or not being the starting right tackle for the Dallas Cowboys? I mean, as we look at this, these are the notes from over the cap. They do such a great job here. Terrence Steele signed a five. Let me zoom out just a bit here. Uh, Terrence Steele signed a five-year contract extension with the Dallas Cowboys worth $82.5 million. New money, maximum new money, 87.5. Still received 23.6, fully guaranteed with an additional 13 and a quarter investing guarantees. He received $15 million in signing bonus, had $5 million in performance salary escalators in 2025 through 2028. This is all courtesy of Todd Archer of ESPN. Why is there any sort of presentation that Terrence Steele is not unquestionably the Dallas Cowboys starting right tackle? Don't you find that interesting? And I, I've thought about this, obviously, a lot over the course of the week. I wrote the article about Daniel Jeremiah and his mock of, of Tyler Guyton last week. As mentioned, you can read my article on that subject and this subject at large at blogontheboys.com. And the question that I kept coming back to, and as I was discussing it with my friends on the internet and the commenters, our wonderful commenters, both here on the Blog on the Boys YouTube channel and blogontheboys.com, 
Could the Cowboys consider moving Terrence Steele to left guard? That's the only way that I think that this could make sense, right? The only way that this could possibly um, make some semblance of sense is if your offensive line from left to right is Tyler Smith, Terrence Steele, which is something the Cowboys talked about last year, Brock Hoffman, let's call it Zach Martin and call it Tyler Guyton or whatever. I mean, is that an option? Is that, I mean, because I'm not making this up. This is something that the Cowboys themselves, let's get one more thing on your screen here. Less than a year ago. All right. This was March 28th, 2023, 328. Happy day to the Atlanta Falcons. All right. We wrote this article is by the fantastic Tom Ryle. The Cowboys were considering the idea of Terrence Steele at left guard. All right. This is a tweet from Clarence Hill that we included in the article. Obviously, Cowboys coach Mike McCarthy on cross training Terrence Steele at guard. I mean, we're talking about it. Yeah, we're talking about it. We haven't gotten there with those guys yet. Offseason program starts in April. But yeah, well, definitely we're looking at those things. This is a tweet from Nick Eatman. Jerry Jones says the NFL owners meetings. He sees Terrence Steele still as a tackle and providing tackle depth with Tyron and Tyler Smith. As for left guard, the draft is probably the best spot to address that need. But the Joneses or Jones, excuse me, didn't rule out signing someone from within or using someone from within. So is that at play? Is there chatter about this? That's really all I'm wondering. Obviously, Terrence Steele is a part of the plans for 2024, but there is at the very least, or there are at the very least, two different people intimating that there is some sort of competition for the Dallas Cowboys at the right tackle spot. And I don't think any of us anticipated that as far as any kind of conversation that we could have predicted relative to things percolating around the NFL combine. But Lo and behold, here we are. Um, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing here to the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. As mentioned, we are on the way to passing our friends at Arrowhead Pride and, of course, on the way to 22,000 subscribers. Thank you to those of you who have already uh, been a part of our journey for this entire time. Uh, we appreciate you very much, and we strive very hard. We work very hard to make sure that you are well-fed in the world and in the area of Dallas Cowboys content. If you think that I'm cool or you want to follow me and – tell me that I'm not cool. You can. My name is RJ Ochoa. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or threads at RJ Ochoa or on TikTok at RJ.Ochoa. For now, I bid you adieu. I told you that I hoped whatever you had eaten most recently was delicious. I'm going to do you one better. I hope the next thing that you eat is even more delicious. I hope it's amazing. I hope it's fantastic. I hope it is just a, a culinary experience uh, beyond your wildest imagination. You know why? Because you deserve it. Thanks so much for hanging out, everybody. We'll see you next time.